Hello, Theodore Schubot here, giving you guys another message that you will not hear at church. I guarantee that. The last words of the pilot of the Air Asia Airlines that crashed, the last words have been released. Not all of them, but a good amount of them. And what's been heard、uh, from this recording should be enough to really compel us to think that yes, Islam is involved. This was an Islamic attack, and just to give you guys what some of the media is reporting,、uh, the last words of the pilot, Captain Idianto, when they heard the last words, they heard Allahu Akbar. This is the words that all terrorists say, either when they're in combat or before they destroy themselves in a suicide jihad. According to、uh, the Daily Mail, it says listening to the last words of the pilot of the crashed airlines will be one of the most challenging tasks for an Indonesian investigator, etc., etc. And、uh, further in the report, it says what was chilling, he said, was hearing final words like "Allahu Akbar," God is great. So in the voice recording of Captain Idianto, "Allahu Akbar" was heard. I'm sorry when you hear. Muslims say Allahu Akbar. It's almost always when they are involved in jihad or about to crash themselves. Now, this is not the first、uh, type of this is not the first time that this type of thing has happened、uh, in that part of the world and also in the Muslim world in general. The first time that something like this happened in the Muslim world、uh, first occurred after the crash of Singapore Silk Air Flight One Eighty Five on December Nineteenth. 1997, and also Egypt Air Flight 990 on October 31st, 1999. In both cases, the U.S. authorities concluded pilot suicide, and investigators with the Muslim countries concluded otherwise. In the in the case of the Egyptian airline, it was concluded that the pilot was indeed、uh, committing suicide, and it, when they heard the Arabic, the Arabic indicated that indeed he was on a suicide. Mission. He was most definitely involved in a suicide jihadist mission because they were Americans on the airplane. He wanted to kill those Americans. In the case for the second、uh, incident, the Malaysian pilot is said to have been、uh, said to have been very distraught, and he wanted to kill himself because he lost a lot of money in gambling. Nonetheless, both were suicidal、uh, attempts. Both were suicidal uh, uh, moments, and in this case. It's quite obvious that this was a jihadist attack, and the last words of the pilot, or one of the last words of the pilot, was "Allahu Akbar." Now I'm going to show you guys a clip,、uh, a clip that was filmed in Malaysia, showing a leader of the terrorist organization in、uh, Indonesia and Malaysia called Hibut Tahir, and the sheikh, the imam, is saying. That they are going to establish a caliphate in Indonesia and Malaysia. Notice the black flags being held by countless of the watchers. The black, the same black flags that all Islamic terrorists hold aloft.、Um, and this video really indicates、uh, how Islamic fundamentalism is truly inundating the nation of Indonesia. It's truly sinking its claws into the depths of Indonesia and、uh, society.、Uh, if not, it has already. Sunk those claws in, and the Indonesian nation is just、uh, is just about to explode into a full fledged Sharia nation. Play the clip. Ingatlah bahawa kita umat 
Now you see in this crowd literally tens upon uh, tens of thousands of Islamic jihadists saying Allahu Akbar, holding the black flags of Islam. You're telling me that out of all of this crowd, you can't find one guy who's a pilot? They say, because I've heard people say, oh no, no, this pilot wasn't a jihadist. He was a national hero in Indonesia. Don't you understand? Really, when I see crowds this big of all Islamic jihadists, I don't think it's adventurism to say that, hey, at least one of these guys could be a pilot. Another thing that I want to tell you guys is that the pilot, uh, Captain Iranto, was a confirmed fundamentalist. Uh, for example, just to give you some statements from the Indonesian media, Iranto was also active in the community as a board member and chairman of the mosque at his residence in Pondok Jati Block BC 12 village, Padawojo, Budran Sudoajro. The next statement says, in addition to serving as chairman of RT 39, Irianto also served as a board leader of Masjid Narul Yakin, which is located in the housing complex. He was also a, he was also diligent in worship. When everyone was at home, he would certainly be seen praying in congregation in the mosque. Because we know this man was devout. He was not some sort of an atheist or a liberal or a moderate or anything like that. Secondly, this man is a confirmed killer. This man was involved in the massacre of thousands upon thousands of Christian Catholics in the nation of East Timor. As you know, in the 1970s, continuing on all the way into the 90s, the Indonesian government was involved in the massacre upon, of thousands upon thousands of Christians in the nation of East Timor, and it most definitely was a jihad. Captain Idianto was a captain, was an, uh, uh, an, air, an airplane uh, or an Air Force fighter, who took part in the bombing of East Timor. So not only was this man a devout Muslim, he was also a part of a former jihad that the Indonesian government commenced against Christians in East Timor, and he murdered Christians. So this man already has blood in his hands. And then he was involved. He was a pilot in an airplane that just so, just so happened to have crashed. But then when we find the last recordings of what this guy said, part of his statement is, Allahu Akbar. So let's see, devout Muslim, murdered Christians in East Timor, confirmed killer, confirmed Islamist, then we find out he was a pilot in a plane, the plane crashed, and his last words consist of Allahu Akbar. I'm sorry, it seems quite obvious that this was indeed a jihad. And this only means, this only indicates, this only foreshadows that more airplanes are going to crash as long as we have Muslims going into airplanes, as long as we have Muslims being pilots and working in airliners and working in, uh, working in airports. We cannot allow Muslims to work in the ATA or in the, um, t uh, in the uh, airport security. We cannot allow Muslims to, to be involved in any sort of uh, career or a job position in an airport. We cannot allow Muslim pi pilots. I don't think we should be allowing Muslims on airplanes. It's really just this simple. What we need to do is adopt what Israel's El Al airline does. And that what they do is they, uh, is they have a, uh, a very absolute system of discrimination. We need to start discriminating people before they get on airplanes. We need, to, we need to adopt fully the system of Israel, and that means we need to start profiling. Israel doesn't have the kind of problems that other countries has when, in regards to uh, airport security, and they are amongst uh, the majority of Muslim nations. They are the only, uh, they're, they're a Jewish nation in the midst of Muslim nations, and they don't have the pro kind of problems that other countries have. They, they, they've never had a 9-11. And they have, L, they have their own security system, and it obviously works. We need to adopt completely the system of Israel. And another thing also is the rules in airports nowadays, a lot of it, a lot of it is quite stupid. Just to give you guys an example, I was in an airport, an air, uh, airport just a couple days ago, and my dad pulls out a cigarette, starts smoking, and immediately this officer runs up to him and says, You have to go in the back, get out of here, get out of you can't smoke. Very aggressively, in an aggressive tone. And I, and I said... When he did that, I said, excuse me, what if somebody was reading a Quran in front of this airport? You wouldn't stop them. These officers wouldn't stop them. I can be a Muslim in an airplane, but I can't smoke a cigarette in front of an airport. I can read a Quran in front of an airport. I can read a Quran in an airport. I can read a Quran in an airplane, but I can't smoke a cigarette outside of an airport. This is how stupid, reckless, and mindless the airports are becoming. They're not adopting rules that are going to prevent violence, they are adopting rules that only make us feel safe. 
If I see somebody reading a Quran in front of an airport, I'm sorry, that man is getting arrested and interrogated. I believe uh, reading a Quran shows more of a threat than smoking a bloody cigarette. This is Theodore Shuba. I hope you guys have enjoyed this message. Hope you guys have learned something from this message. You just heard some feel. Logic. God bless and God be with us. Žali za reda, žalimo kako će se razdvojimo. Ti od mene, ja od tebe, ja će idem na daleko. Ja će idem na daleko, na daleko. Belo vranje će se pišem u kumite, u kumite, mlad kumitare. Pa će uzmem kralsku sablju i toj kralsko sve oružje. Pa će idem čkupčinju, čkupčinju, prešem kazu. Pa će pređem vardar vodu, vardar vodu, brž golemu. Če se tepan stija Turci, stija Turci, Arnauti. Žali plači da žalimo, kad će slunce da ogreje. Kad će slunce da ogreje, ti pomisli od Boga je. Ti da znaješ, to je mojo, to je mojo belo lice. Ti da znaješ, to je mojo, to je mojo belo lice. Kće vetar da poduvne ti pomisli od Boga je, pa ti rekni to je moja, to je moja blaga duša. Kće rosa da zarosi ti pomisli od Boga je, pa ti rekni to su moje, to su moje drobne sluze.